Alex Alner from Hindle Power, and today I'm here to talk to you not so much about battery chargers, but we're actually going to talk a little bit more about circuit breakers. And I actually brought one with me. This is a little 20 amp clip on breaker. But the thing I want you to know is that circuit breakers have basically two functions, right? They act as a switch to turn something on and off, and they also act to interrupt the fault where they just open automatically when uh, current reaches too high. But there's a third part of circuit breakers that we don't talk much about, and that is how much current it can actually interrupt. And so the point of this conversation is to discuss that in terms of battery chargers. So we're going to discuss the AC and DC circuit breakers primarily as it relates to battery chargers and where they fit into the circuit. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to also see some references to this book called Charge. And Charge was written by uh, the late Bill Bennett. He was a really great mentor of mine, uh, mentored a lot of people, uh, was in this industry pretty much his whole life. I miss him dearly, but his book is available. It's, it's available um, at Amazon and so on, but if you want to get a copy of it, give me a shout, either an email or a call, and I'll tell you how you can get a copy of it as well. So with that, let's start discussing AC and DC interrupting capacities as it relates to battery chargers. And so we start out with pretty much just what is interrupting capacity. And this is a good example because Wiley Coyote stops um, Roadrunner. And a not so good example. So in simple terms, what we're really talking about here when we're talking about interrupting capacity is exactly how much current a circuit breaker can actually, well, interrupt. And so in discussing that, what you want to talk about is a term called the AIC. It, it, it stands for asymmetrical interrupting capacity. But very simply, you'll see it as AIC rating. And that deals with how much current the breaker can actually stop, which will exceed its trip rating by some number. So we also need to discuss that these AIC ratings as to how they relate to the battery charger are different for both AC and DC circuits as to how we determine them and so on. Um, but no matter what, all circuit breakers and all fuses in a circuit will be sized based on an interrupting capacity as it relates to where they are in the circuit. Now, when we start this conversation, we're going to start on the AC side for a minute. And the reason for that is there are AC breakers and battery chargers. And so what happens is we see that the, um, the um, National Electric Code, uh, Article 110, Paragraph 110, whatever, discusses exactly how you determine AIC ratings for different places in a circuit. So it's telling you like at the main feeder panel, it would be 65K and such the good branch breakers will be 22k and so on and so forth but the real thing is what does all this mean and how does it really work for me so first things first for most applications you're going to find most battery chargers their standard breakers are fine and you can actually check what that is from the manufacturer you can check what the upstream breaker ratings would be so all this information is usually fairly easily available now, the next thing is, can the charger's AC input actually accommodate the fault? So can the input breaker actually accommodate the fault? And basically, since it's an appliance, there are upstream breakers that will accommodate it. So what does this really look like? So when you go out to the pole, you have your main feeder off the pole coming into your building, and you want to protect that with an input breaker to this panel of about 65k rating but then the subsequent branch breakers are 22k so that means that the main breaker can stop a fault up to 65,000 amps the branches up to 22,000 amps they get down to the appliance where really 5,000 amps is enough and all of this has to do with rationale from the national electric code based on wiring and what the currents would be at different points in the circuit now, on the DC side, 
Well, this becomes even kind of more interesting because uh, there's not much written about it. So generally, what starts to happen is people say, well, wait a minute, why don't I just look at the battery short circuit rating and make that my assumption as to what the DC breaker rating should be. Not really accurate in terms of what's happening electrically. So let's discuss this with a little bit of detail. First off, the battery isn't a load to the charger. Now, there might be some current that the charger, the battery is a load to the charger rather. The charger is not a load to the battery. So while a small amount of current might come from the battery to the charger for some of the minor control circuits, those are really very minor and would not cause that battery to absolutely short circuit. So again, you have to also make sure that things like the, um, the wiring and so on would even support those higher currents, which they probably wouldn't. So all of those things add up to the fact that it would be highly unusual, almost electrically impossible, for the full rating of that battery to slide back into the output side of the charger and that that breaker would need to interrupt that. So if the charger is not a load to the battery, then what we could do is take another look at this in terms of, okay, what if it was? What if we really said it was? Well, one of the simple ways to determine interrupting capacity on a battery, look at its nominal ampere hour rating and multiply it times 10. But if you want to do it like an engineer, what I do is I actually look at it in terms of the internal resistance of the battery. And I used typical internal resistances in milliamps for milliohms for these particular batteries. And you can calculate out that it comes out to be, again, about 10 times the rating. So even the highest possible load here would only require about a 2K IEC breaker. And generally the minimum breakers are 5K. So you'd probably have to get up to over 500 ampere hours before you even considered going to a higher breaker using basically a theory that doesn't actually hold water. So let's just get back to basics on a couple of things. One is the battery charger, right, provides current to the battery. The battery is not there as a current source to the charger. When the charger is operating, the battery is the load, the charger is the source, and there might be some other loads down the, down the way, but the most current coming out of that battery charger is usually about 110% of rating. There are some chargers that might get you a little bit more current than 110%, but basically the 110% is a good number. Even if that case, we don't have multi-thousand ampere hour ampere battery charger outputs. When the charger is de-energized, if it's one of ours, if it's a, a Hindle power charger, the SCRs are then open. So there's very little circuit available to pull that full short circuit current back from the battery anyway. So you're going to generally find that when the charger is off, the load might be about a half an amp or less. So in summary, offering higher than required AIC rated breakers will impact the price of the charger significantly. So, you know, why do it if you don't have to? The uh, most cases adding the higher than standard AIC rated breakers provides no real benefit. And we don't offer higher than standard breakers unless they're asked for. And when they're asked for by a customer, we supply them. Not a problem. So thank you for attending our presentation. We really appreciate the time you put in. And if you have any questions or want to get back to me, please let me know.